Hey, Vinyl Community, Jeff here again, and it is time for another of these Sunday Fun Day uh, A to Z's in Christian Rock and Hard Rock. And again, uh, if you're new to this series, we're just looking through my vinyl collection at records that would fall into the category, whether tightly marketed that way or loosely into what would be considered the you know Christian Rock era. So, um, yeah, so we made it up to S. We're in the second part of the S's. And there are, you know, those gray areas, as we've seen in the past, some gray areas where bands that might kind of have things that make them lean that way. There are gray areas there. But anyway, let's jump right into this. We are into the second part of the S's. We made it up to Shout last time into the SH area. So we're into SI. Signum Regis, uh, they have quite a few albums out, Overseas Band, and um, I discovered them because on their earlier albums, they had people like Matt from Theocracy and stuff like that, guest people from other Christian bands on there, and I thought, huh, I never heard of that band, and they put out quite a few albums, just a Euro metal, melodic, power metal of Europe, and uh, this is their most recent album, uh, I think they have a couple other ones that have been on vinyl, but they're imports, and so they're harder to get, I just happened to get this one for a good price, and I have not been able to get the other ones yet. But I do have pretty much all their stuff digitally. Great stuff. Check them out. Siloam. Um, so this is a their first album by Siloam. They did, I think, three albums? Two or three? The first one is, in my opinion, pretty drastically different from the ones that followed. Uh, so this would have been in the 90s. But still, it has a very straightforward, uh, you know, melodic metal of the day feel. Um, you know, the, the Guns N' Roses, all that melodic anthemy type stuff. And uh, and then after this, the, the stuff to me became a little more alternative feeling. Uh, but this is the only one that's been reissued on vinyl. All right, this is kind of a, this was a fun little thing. Sin, uh, Sin Dizzy. After Striper disbanded in the early 90s, uh, Tim Gaines and Oz Fox went on to do this uh, little project with Oz singing. And they put out basically some demo type tapes never really went much further than that and then those demo tapes were you know those independent release tapes were put together and released as a cd and then a handful of years later finally were pressed to vinyl autograph card in the day and a sticker so this was kind of just a more of a novelty thing of them and then up next we have probably one of the more key bands nowadays that's making waves everywhere um skillet they've been around for a couple decades but they've really made it and they've got you know the crossover power you hear them on all the mainstream radio stations you hear them you know a lot I, i'm hard to believe some people are like i didn't know they were christian but you know because their music is very anthemic and everything but it's it, it's pretty blatant if you know what you're looking for and he preaches from the stage so if you see him in concert you're going to get that impression i've only got uh, two of theirs on vinyl. Their most recent album that came out, what, last year? I don't think it's been, never did get a vinyl reissue. This is their most recent, recent prior to that. And then their older stuff, uh, you know, maybe one day they'll go back and repress it. But, you know, for, they, they've become kind of a household name in a lot of worlds there. And then we got, okay, these are, uh, there's three of these, Sleeping Giant, you can't see this, this is totally black, Sleeping Giant, these have been reissued recently on vinyl, they are a uh, metalcore, metalcore, yeah, because they're, you know, kind of punkish, hardcore-ish, metal, yeah, they're more metalcore, new metal, I don't know, people, I guess people would probably qualify, classify them as, as metalcore, uh, yeah, metalcore probably, and I may be wrong, there's so many different, different, little nuances there to some of these styles but these were um recently reissued this one not so much but the other two were recently reissued on vinyl so they're one of the few uh metalcore bands modern metalcore bands that i do really enjoy so i did pick them up their their earlier stuff i'm hoping they go back and reissue that on vinyl because they have a couple albums in the early days which is when i really got into them that i have not heard whether they're coming out to read they were on vinyl back in the day i think but they're hard to get now all right, Soldier. So Soldier is one of those bands, uh, California bands that, you know, we all loved back in the day, but they just never got signed. They appeared on some compilations. They were one of the good bands, better bands out there in the California Christian metal scene, but they just never got signed. Um, so this is kind of a compilation, not compilation, um, anthology put together uh, by Rocks Records back in the day, a handful of years ago, 30th anniversary where they put out their main, they had like one main uh, 
cassette, pretty pro pro independent release cassette with a lot of other demos. But they released all of that on on vinyl, and then they, it also came with. You can get a package of this. I got the CDs that have all the extra stuff, some live stuff, and anyway. So yeah, uh, one of one of the, my favorite bands back in the day. Uh, it's just some great stuff. So melodic, soaring, great vocals, great guitar playing, everything great there. All right, here's one that's going to be, and this is I'm not even classifying this as it. I'm just it's it's mainly because of the involvement of you know Soul Driver is not a Christian band, but the fact that Michael Sweet is one of the singers and probably has something to do with some of the songwriting. One of those Christian friendly things, and there's going to be quite a few of those in here because Michael Sweet has done a lot of stuff like that. So moving on, now I mentioned in part one, I mentioned uh, the uh, Scattered Few, and then I mentioned that Spyglass Blue was coming. This is a project that uh, the singer did after or during or what you know after the uh, Scattered Few, he did a couple releases from Sky Blast, Spy Spyglass <laughs> Blue, and when all of the reissues for the Scattered View Few came out on vinyl, they reissued the two. Spy Glass Blue. So I bought all of these back on Black Friday when they had a, a really good sale on those. All right. I don't think I didn't show. I showed these not too terribly long ago. Stairway. Uh, where are they from? UK, I believe. Uh, overseas band. Uh, typical melodic hard rock and metal type stuff. Classic-y feel. And uh, they've got quite a few albums out over the past dec few decades. And uh, a couple of them were pressed to vinyl. This is one of their uh, ones from not too terribly long ago. And this is one, this is the actual uh, 30, what is it, 35th anniversary? It's one of the older albums, I think, maybe even their first. Uh, I don't want to say that, whatever. No Rest, No Mercy. But this was recently reissued on vinyl. So dig these guys. I have quite, most of their stuff, I believe, digitally, but uh, only those on vinyl. Another one that maybe you want to classify it, maybe you don't, maybe it's loosely in there. Um, it's, an, you know, people have their, you know, love or hate him, you know, Scott Stapp. Um, you know, Creed always had that, are they, you know, because they always had that lyrical content that leaned heavily towards spiritual things. They never were a Christian band, but Scott has been through a lot of trouble and he's been through a lot of turmoil in his life. I read his biography. I see that he really seemed to be a man that turned to faith. I hear it in the songs. I hear it in the lyrics. His newest album, Higher Power, I've listened to a couple of times, and it's it's evident through there. So whether he is going to be outright considered in the, in the Christian realm, uh, it's definitely, I think, Christian-friendly and has lots of spiritual pro, uh, pro-Christian type lyrics. So I don't want to misclassify him, but it's beyond a doubt in quite a few songs that the man is coming from an area of faith on a lot of his songs stevie and the saints is uh, i don't know how much they did but this is like i think the only album they really put out there's a blues band christian band from the back in the i believe in the 80s um and yeah, this is like a, a regular yeah, 87 smaller label and you know they put out this album as far as i know i don't know what else they put out i remember hearing this back in the day and i have this on vinyl so stevie and the saints just uh you know Blues-based goodness. Oh, I don't want to say one and done. Bjorn Stixon, guitar player for Leviticus, did this album back in the 80s. Got a lot of the people, a lot of friends. It's called Bjorn Stixon and friends, including the singers that did do some work with Leviticus over the years. And even, you know, Bjorn went on to do a lot of stuff with Sonny Larson, uh, who I had mentioned back in the M's for the Motherload album, but Sonny Larson and him did XT together, quite a few albums. But Bjorn Stixon, just great guitar player, and he's done a lot of work with uh, a lot of other bands. He did do a second uh, solo album in the past, has it been like maybe five years ago or so? But I don't, it, it's it's totally different. I think, he, didn't he do most of the singing there? But it, it this is like a, it's just melodic greatness. The other one was a little more, you know, of us you know it didn't have quite the same feeling and of course it was decades later so great stuff all right a classic one front fortress rock stronghold um this is one of the ones i mentioned you know toonsmith the toonsmith label uh i believe last time toonsmith was a canadian label that back in the day late 70s early 80s i think larry norman had some involvement in some of that but it had pretty much almost most of the bands on there were going to be rocking edgier rock stuff uh, and so they were kind of one of the go-to labels. And pretty much back in the day, if it was on Toonsmith, we knew that it was probably going to be, you know, a good rocking album. And so um, this is one of those bands. They did the early Barnabas stuff. They released that. They released a lot of the Hank Lockie stuff, which, you know, just all the stuff which was 
uh, on the cusp of, of the heavy metal stuff that came out. This is just the hard rock stuff and Stronghold, um, just it's classic rock, classic rock goodness. Great album though. So as far as I know, some of, mostly, some of the tunes missed up been reissued, but not all of it. All right. Striking. This is a recent reissue of, it's not straight up a reissue of the first Strike album that they had back in the day. This has got other stuff on it, but it is, uh, includes the classic First Strike album plus unreleased and previously unreleased tracks. So it's not a straight up reissue of First Strike. It's got the, that plus a lot of other stuff. And they did release like a box set that had even more stuff on it. Some other recordings, some earlier recording stuff. So I say most of the anthology of stuff from the Strikin uh, era uh, has been reissued. And so I really dug the band. I, you know, they, they get a lot of flack for a lot of things, but I thought it was a killer album. I loved it back in the day and I still love it. And there's that. And then you have the actual First Strike album, which, you know, I've shown back in the day, I was one of the ones that helped pre-sponsor this and bought it ahead of time and helped sponsor it. So on the in insert there, you got my name. Uh, well, I just got mine and my wife's name in there. And then one of my former bandmates is in there too, because we both were into that. So we got into that. And then they had before that, they had just a 12 inch single of two songs, which later made it to first strike. And so anyway, I have all of that stuff and I'm a real big fan. All right, now moving in. We're going to, obviously we're going to mention Striper. I'm not going to show all their stuff. I've done videos galore on Striper in the past on my entire collection. So I'm just going to show you the most recent one. Striper is well known. They're well known. Everybody knows who they are. So no use going through a lot of space there. Final Battle is their most recent one. And then I just, you know, show the one that came out before that. Even the devil believes. They are just still going strong. Great stuff. Uh, they just released a acoustic album and they're working on new stuff and so anyway great stuff have to mention striper they are probably the kings of christian metal and and now we're moving into the stuff that's you know a lot of the stuff not christian strictly involved with michael sweet sunbomb him and tracy guns um not a christian now but since he's probably involved in writing a lot of lyrics you're going to have stuff that's not going to be against his worldview. So because of his involvement as a vocalist, Michael Sweet, as in his involvement, you know, there's going to have that influence. So I'm just throwing this out there as something in case you weren't aware of it. Michael Sweet uh, did Sunbomb. Michael Sweet, of course, has done all the Sweet and Lynch albums. George Lynch, you know, uh, does not, you know, there's nothing about this release that would classify it as Christian metal, but Michael Sweet's writing all the lyrics. It's his project. So there's, there's going to be stuff that's not against it. Let's say that Christian friendly again. So, um, and they got like three albums out. I'm only going to show that one. And then you get the Michael Sweet solo stuff. So he's done quite a few solo albums and he hasn't done one real recently because he's been doing all these other projects, the Soul Driver, the Sun Bomb, the Sweet and Lynch and Striper, of course. Um, but even, even during the Striper, he was still doing, you know, so additional solo albums past that. So 10, yeah, great stuff there. And then prior to that, he did One-Sided War. And he has a lot of guest people that appear on here that are not going to be, you know, they're just friends that, from other bands that are not necessarily, you know, of, a, of the Christian ilk themselves. So um, Reborn Again, this is the one that, that, that later became the Striper album that they did, uh, and he released it in its original form. So, And then the 1994 one that started it all, basically. There's quite a few in between, a couple in between, but this is the only one that has had a vinyl reissued there. So... And then last but not least, uh, Switchfoot. This is the only one I have by them on vinyl. They have quite a few, but the only one I picked up. And this is a reissue where they re-recorded their uh, Beautiful Let Down album and have reissued it recently. So pick that up. Anyway, that's it for this one. That is the continuation of the S's, and we will move into the T's next time. Thanks for watching. Rock on and rock hard.